Today we're checking out a new tablet, this time the TCL Tab 10 Gen 2. Normal price for this one is $189, but I believe it's about $20 off as of this video. But I'll leave a link down below with current pricing and more information. <laughs> Some of the specs on this one has got a 10.36 inch 2K IPS display with 2000 by 1200 resolution. It's got 350 nits brightness. It's got a MediaTek Helio P22T processor. It's got four gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage. Also uses a micro SD card to expand the storage as well. It's got an eight megapixel rear facing camera, five megapixel on the front. You can shoot up to 1080p resolution at 30 frames per second on both cameras. It's got a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, only 10 watts charging with this one. So it's not gonna be the fastest to charge back up. It's got dual speakers. Unfortunately, no headphone jack. Nice aluminum material here on the back. Nice camera set up there on the back. You've got your power and volume buttons on the right hand side or on the top, depending on how you're holding it. Micro SD card tray there as well. You've got your speaker on each side, charging port on the bottom. Fairly small bezels all the way around. Once setting up, you've got face unlock, pin, pattern, or password. This also has Next Vision, which is pretty common with TCL products for image enhancement, video enhancement, and game enhancement. You can also choose whether you want an app drawer, or you can have all the apps go to the home screen, similar to an iPad. You also have classic or TCL style lock screen. Once you turn the screen brightness up a little bit, it actually looks really nice in here. For some reason, they started out at 50% brightness, and yeah, that doesn't really look too good. I gotta say, pretty interesting wallpapers on here. If you swipe down on the screen, you get your notifications on the right, shortcuts over on the left like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, volume, brightness, auto rotate, do not disturb, location, airplane mode, device control, dark mode, screenshot, next vision, reading mode, screencast, battery saver, eye comfort mode, screen recorder, nearby share, scan QR code. This also has PC mode and second screen as well. And then you've got about six others you can add like focus and bedtime mode, live caption, calculator, system update, and storage. Left to the home screen, you've got the Google Discover newsfeed, Swipe up to see all of your pre-installed apps. They don't put a lot of extra apps on here, mostly the ones from Google. Surprisingly, this also has PC mode, sort of like Dex, maybe just not quite as many features. So it's gonna make it feel a little bit more like Samsung Dex or just closer to a regular PC versus a tablet. So far, it's using about 26 gigabytes of the 128 total. The software is currently on Android 13. The style or skin that they use is called TCL UI version 5.0.3 SEH, which I feel like is actually pretty nice. You can customize it a little more than you can stock Android. It does have some of your standard gestures like double tap to wake and three finger screenshot. You can also double press the power button to bring up the camera. You can also change the button layout for navigation or of course go to gesture navigation as well. This doesn't come with a pen or stylus, but you can use a regular capacitive stylus or active pen like this one here. Now the screen on here actually looks really good. It's only a wide vinyl 3 with SD playback resolution for apps like Netflix. You can go up to 4K upscaled resolution for YouTube videos, but it's definitely not as smooth as just 1080p, so I probably wouldn't use it that way. It's just a little too choppy. Now, as far as performance goes, you can tell this has entry level performance. This is one of the few tablets that I've tested that struggles playing Asphalt 9. I don't know if it had other stuff going on in the background, but I just haven't had that issue with too many tablets. PUBG Mobile seemed to play okay. It's not really the best. It's got lower graphics and frame rates, but yeah, if you're wanting a gaming tablet, this probably isn't gonna be your best choice. And you can sort of tell by the Geekbench scores, probably would have just enough power to do most of your basic things, but it's it's not going to be more powerful than something like the Galaxy Tab A9 Plus or even the Tab A8. I also ran my typical battery drain test and this one lasted about seven and a half hours. So a little above average compared to others I've tested. Now, obviously there's a lot of variables with battery life, but it should last you a day or so with mixed usage, even longer if you turn the screen brightness down. Now it looks like you have two speakers on each side, but it's actually just one on each side. The other one's just kind of for looks. I still feel like they're probably loud enough for most people. Here's a quick sample just to give you an idea of what they sound like. Thank you. 
Now in the camera app, you've got stop motion, pano, photo, and video. You can shoot up to 1080p resolution, 30 frames per second for video recording. Although I don't think this is gonna be your first pick if you need to take photos or video, you're probably gonna get much better results just using your cell phone. Here's just a few samples of photo and video just to give you an idea of what to expect from the cameras on here. As you can see from these photo and video samples, not a huge surprise, but it's not gonna be the best quality out there. So this probably wouldn't be my first pick for Zoom meetings or other video conference calls. I think you can get much better results from your cell phone, even entry to mid-level phones. I feel like the screen quality on here is pretty nice, but probably the downside is gonna be the performance. I would have to do a comparison, but I feel like this is gonna be slower than even the older Galaxy Tab A8. So it would be hard for me to choose this one over some of the other tablets in this category. If you're looking for phone and tablet comparisons, I've got a lot more that I'm working on, so you'll want to keep an eye out for those upcoming videos. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.